Hello, this is Keith Larson, editor of Control Magazine and ControlGlobal.com. Welcome to this Solution Spotlight edition of our Control Amplified podcast. Today, I'm pleased to have with me Dr. Ted Abe, Senior Vice President and Head of Marketing Headquarters at Yokogawa. We're here to talk about the ongoing transition that is underway from industrial automation to industrial autonomy and what that means for the future of the process industries. Welcome, Dr. Abe. A real pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Lawson. What is it that makes industrial autonomy different from industrial automation? So autonomous is uh, different from automation in many dedicated ways. Uh, first of all, the Yokogawa came up with the definition of what industrial autonomy is. Our definition of autonomy is the plant asset and the operations have learning and uh, adaptive capabilities that allow a response with uh, minimal human interaction, uh, empowering operator to perform high-level optimization task. This allows plant to learn, learn, and adapt, and then strive in tomorrow's environment. The automation involved the performance of sequence of highly structured pre-programmed tasks, each of which require human oversight, uh, with the potential for intervention. For example, an operator could be responsible for safety starting up a unit or for initiating a switch over from one crude feed stock to another. The autonomy goes beyond automation by adding layers of smart sensing and uh, machine cognition to anticipate and uh, respond to unforeseen circumstances, ultimately removing the need for human intervention. In a fully autonomous operation, the system is responsible for all aspects of the operation from startup through to safe shutdown. So what factors are driving the process industries toward greater autonomy in their operations? Well, the G's uh, include the need to increase productivity and uh, efficiency. Of course, ensure the safety, improve the quality, and uh, reduce the uh, facility operation cost. It is expected that by utilizing a technology such as uh, sensing technology, artificial intelligence, AI, big data analysis, and uh, robotics, as well as conducting complex analysis by broadly linking systems, we will be able to achieve result that go beyond anything previously achieved through the manual operations. With the need to enhance safety in the post-corona world, there will also be a growing need for remote monitoring, remote control, remote engineering, and even services. Where did the process industry stand today in terms of that, that journey to autonomous operations? So the transition from the industrial automation to industrial autonomy is already underway. However, it will not happen overnight. I would say Roma was not built in the day. <laughs> Yokogawa has conducted a global survey of 500 customers in major process industries. No wonder around the one third of respondents said that the primary operations at their plant and facilities are what we consider to be automated level, that is, Operational technology is in control of select processes and uh, human uh, alerted when intervention is required. 
So, so interestingly, the number who said they are already at the semi-autonomous level was not that much lower. That would imply we are already on the high side of automated and uh, uh, transitioning to semi-autonomous operation. However, there are significant differences by industry. So as industries evolve, autonomy will begin to permeate process plants in multiple functional domains, including process operations, planning and scheduling, engineering, field operations, maintenance, and engineering. The further autonomy requires the conversion and the complete automation of manual task human action will be required only under exceptional circumstances. Not only can production processes be made autonomous, but so can higher level functions. Autonomy could expand beyond the traditional controls and the efficiency focus to include safety, reliability, margin optimization, compliance, supply chain management, and other manufacturing operation and functions. Ted, are there particular industries that are leading the way towards greater autonomy? Yes. So our research found that autonomous operations are uh, progressing faster in industries such as oil and gas. It is both midstream and uh, upstream, uh, refining, chemicals, and uh, petrochemicals, where modeling and simulation techniques are more advanced. Yokogawa believes it is easy to introduce systems at offshore platform and other remote midstream and upstream facilities where the need for unmanned operation is very, very high. Oil and gas companies are pursuing remote operation strategies for both onshore and offshore assets. This is particularly true for highly complex, remote, hazardous facilities. The objectives are to reduce cost, eliminate potential adverse effect on environmentally sensitive area, is the recruitment of operators to work at such site lessen the need for personnel to work in remote and or unsafe location and better manage dispersed asset with centralized resources. Yokogawa has helped numerous companies reduce the need for the stationing of personnel at remote site by providing a consolidated control room design, advanced control, and monitoring, scatter, and data integration, and visualization solutions, to name just a few. So what effect has the COVID-19 pandemic had on the shift to autonomous operations? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, yes. Clearly, the pandemic has changed thinking on what qualifies as safe operations. Processors with low level of automation are investing in automation to allow for safe social distance. And this comes even as facilities that are already highly automated to take their next step by investing in connectivity tools to
to enable remote operations and the collaboration from the distance. In each case, the organizations we have, we have moved closer to the, to the ultimate goal of autonomous operations when the pandemic eases. And we expect this shift will gain momentum as the economic situation improves over time. We believe the pandemic will accelerate the shift to industrial autonomy. Fortunately, much of the necessary technology and data for the move to autonomous operation already exist. A significant portion of this data comes from sensor in the control network, or it is obtainable with wireless sensors. Various technology, like AI, are available to process the data and add intelligence. While AI may be essential to achieve high level of autonomy, it may not be required for low autonomy levels. For higher levels, there is a need to develop and all cover architecture to integrate internal and external domains. Can you describe a little bit the stages of maturity that an organization will go through on its journey from industrial automation to industrial autonomy? Mm -hmm. The steps taken to achieve autonomous operation will depend on the type of facility and the level of automation. Uh, for example, greenfield facilities can be designed from the start to have higher level of autonomy. On the other hand, for brownfield facility, autonomy will most likely occur in a step-by-step -step fashion. This type of approach to realize autonomous operations will occur through the adoption of autonomous component that accomplish a specific task or an individual function. This could be in the form of an AI algorithm learning to manipulate and control process variables for the opening or closing of valves, for instance. The autonomous component can be combined and coordinated in an orchestrated manner to achieve higher level of autonomy. Autonomous orchestration will enable autonomy to expand to other functions like asset management, value chain optimization, and so on. This will require broadening the scope of data collection and analysis from individual processes to encompass other functions and activities. Initially, autonomy will be focused on recurring, harmful, difficult, or error-prone tasks. This will not only reduce the workload, but also assist and argument human decision-making. Therefore, improving productivity, the challenge for workers will be to understand and work alongside autonomous components and systems. In preparation for autonomous operation, the companies should examine their current processes and practices. Some manual field operations might need to be automated by means such as the combination 
of procedure automation and AI, or be performed by robotics. Equipment and processing capabilities might need to be bolstered with addition sensor. Yokogawa provides world-class products and solutions that predict potential equipment and process fault, identify root causes, and predict product quality. So Yokogawa's IA to IA model describes symbiotic autonomy as the ultimate destination of the autonomy journey. Can you tell me a little bit more about the organizational needs and business benefits to be gained at this stage of maturity? When looking beyond individual plants, we can get started to consider the autonomous interaction of data and the resources between plant, which we call symbiotic autonomy. In a world that now expect enterprises to consider their operations from the point of view of planetary sustainability, this approach can deliver multi-win outcomes for a much wider range of stakeholders. It's all one kind. The symbiotic autonomy is our ideal goals of IA to IA. Yokogawa plan to play a leading role in making symbiotic autonomy a reality across the world. This will point the way to ultimate goal of the industrial automation to industrial autonomy, it's IA to IA, maturity model, creating ecosystems where people, companies, multi industries across the entire planet will be benefit. In short, all of stakeholders in symbiotic autonomy ecosystem, regardless different industry sectors, they share resources, even if waste. I mean, utilization of waste, each other, in order to achieve net zero emission or negative emission as ultimate circular economy at the end of the day. As we like to say, what's next for our planet? Let's make it smarter. Well, that's certainly quite a vision and, and certainly something to strive for. Thank you for on behalf of all of us for, <laughs> for, for helping advance that vision. Um, thank you, Dr. Abe, for sharing your insights with us today. Really appreciate you having us. Yeah, why don't you join us? <laughs> Symbiotic economy. <laughs> Great. I also want to thank uh, Yokogawa for sponsoring today's episode. I'm Keith Larson, and you've been listening to a Control Amplified podcast. Thanks for joining us. And if you've enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe at the iTunes Store and at Google Podcasts. Plus, you can find the full archive of past episodes at controlglobal.com. Thank you again, Dr. Abe, and signing off until next time. <laughs>